Art historians in, in years to come will be saying, that's Mad Mark's work, won't they? New Year. <laughs> it's, um, yes, I expect we've all got too fat on the roast beast, didn't we? So we're going to look at, um, or maybe not, <laughs> maybe you don't partake in that, but anyway. This is a floor pan. It's not a roasting tin for the roast beast. It's, um, it's a floor pan for the Maserati. So we'll have a look at that in a minute, what I've been doing on that. So we're back on the Maserati. It's New Year. We've got to get the Maserati off the select jig so that I can then concentrate on the Dino again, because that's got to go on the select, because that in a wing work, which um, you might have seen. But yeah, but, so we'll do a bit of Maserati, which will, which will um, it'll please Umberto, won't it? So yeah, so th this, this, this front floor pan I've been making, put the swages in as, as it should look. Now this is in steel, it's 1.2 mil, zinc plated steel, so it'll have a bit of corrosion resistance anyway. Uh, I've got to fill these edges up, you know, we'll look at that, but well, I've got to finish it and I've got to do a little sort of fillet piece in here, change that around a bit. But that's that, that's the floor pan, that's what I'm replacing. So on these Maseratis, they have, a, a, they have um, fiberglass floors, a lot of them do, and it's what they call like a step down chassis, so you sort of this sits down through the chassis. So, so the chassis itself sits up here and, you, and then you, put your, you sit down into it. So this is actually fiberglass, you can see. It's all a bit flimsy, but that's what they have. So these, these must be sort of pre-cast or, or formed in fiberglass and then they pop them in and then fiberglass them in to sort of, you know, where they sit in it. I mean, that's how I think they're done, unless they sort of put a former into the chassis and then pour it and, and mat it up in there. They might have a former that they sort of bolt up under the chassis and hold it. They're not very nice. They always break. And in restoring these, we go over to steel. Now, we've got some footage of the other silver one. Do you remember I had to make all the floors for that? So we'll have a look at that and that'll give you an idea of what we're doing. But that's what it's all about. So, yeah, you can see, see it has these, these swages in it. So we've copied them, I've re replicated them on that one. So it's identical. And then we've got the sort of how it sits down and so on. But yeah, you see that bit that I'm on about there? That's the part I've got to do that piece in here. So I've got to let a piece in there to do that or remove a piece, then let a piece in. So that's it. And you remember we got that picture, haven't we? <laughs> of the chap with his overalls that are a bit too short for him. Uh, Uncle Giuseppe, are you? Uh, yes, I euphemistically called him tonight. Um, and he's daubing all this on, isn't he, onto one of these chassis. So, you know, perhaps that was him. That is his brush strokes, you know? That was, that was him with his potted old tar. Yeah, much like an artist. That's his work. You can see how they move. You can see the shape of them, you know? Um, art historians in, in years to come will be saying, that's Giuseppe's work. <laughs> there you go. Um, well, we were saying that's Mad Mark's work, weren't they? Okay. Well, we'll have a look at the car. Here's our chassis and what I'm talking about where it sort of steps down into it. We'll have a look at the floor plan in a minute. But first, I'll show you what I've been doing. So, so I've let a new piece in here, a new piece of chassis there, because that was very peppered. So one of, the, one of the pitfalls of this, you can see sort of it's peppered there. So one of the pitfalls of why they do that is the damp gets up between here and it, and it rots these out. Now, if you sort of pan over to that side, can you see the holes in that chassis? See that, that one there? And that bit nearest to us is the, where the throttle pedal mounts to it. But you can see it's quite bad in there. So that's why I'll have to replace them to sort that out. But this side wasn't anything like as bad as that. Uh, in fact, I'll show you it. I'll get the old chassis rail up. So that was what we had. But you can see there, it's gone through there and so on. But it's actually in reasonably good, good fettle. I mean, the, actually, the, the steel is still pretty good. I'm quite, you know, it's quite good. And then that's the bit that goes inside the sill area and so on. So that would, yeah, that's sort of like that. That's it. So that went up and through there. 
we had a bit of an issue up in here. This one, this was all rot, the front of that, front edge of that had gone. Yeah, so that, that's, that's just where I hacked it out there. So I just drilled it out and then I got, I got a nib, air nibbler in there and ran along there to see it. But you can see how peppered it is. So I didn't like the look of that. I thought we ought to replace that one. That's a bit heavier than the others. But actually inside, it was still very good, which is remarkable. But it was quite intriguing taking this out because what I did find in here was I found a great big lump of stick sticking up where they'd welded it. So where they, um, you know, where these welds are, all these welds where they make the chassis was all done with arc, with a big old arc welder with sticks. And they got it down to a T because they've got some nice, they've run some nice welds in here, which we, we'll have a look at some of them in detail, maybe insert them pictures in. Um, but yeah, they've done some good stuff. Um, yeah, they obviously got very proficient with it. And of course it's what they did back in the day then. So that's that. So yeah, so there we go. I've put a face in there. We'll have a look at that in the pictures. Replace that bit of chassis there. Um, there you go, there's some of the tube. That's the tube I'm using. This stuff, so that's 1.5 mil wall thickness, exactly the same as they were using. And that's it, and there's the bit. There's the off cut. Yeah, well, I've done that bit, so that's it. So we've got enough for, you know, doing other bits. So that's that. And if I get the floor pan, and we'll pop it in, you'll see what I'm on about, how it fits. So let's start with the um, factory one. So yeah, you can see what I mean. It all sits down here like this. So that sort of sits in there like that. Something like that. Yeah, you see, and it's sort of bonded in there and it just sort of bonds in round here. You know, it's all missing around there because it was all broken up when we took it out. And so that's why you have to take these out because you've got all this problem behind where all this goes, where it all gets, you know, dirt gets trapped up in there because it just travels up underneath, you know, and gets into there. So it's not, it's not, a, I don't think it's a very good way of doing things personally, but which is why I make them in steel. And it is, it is industry standard for restoring these to make them in steel. You know, it's quite, it's quite a normal thing. And then you weld them in. Well, it will stiffen the chassis up a bit as well, but to be honest, they're pretty stiff already, these, so it's not really that much of a problem. So there you go. How's that? It's all right now. So yeah, that's it. Um, obviously, I've got, to, I've got to run some welds in it, and I've got to let a fillet in there, really, haven't I? Because it's got to sort of go around that corner. I'm copying what they did, so I'm copying the size uh, of the actual pan and then these bend out a bit to meet which is sort of how that is um, so they're not actually parallel but also the chassis is not parallel because it, it, it sort of you see it sort of comes up here and then goes does down there so it's, it's it's not symmetrical anyway the chassis and that floor pans is much bigger than this one so they're, they're quite an odd thing you know it's not until you look at the chassis um, in detail you see how strange they are so of course look at how short that area is there so that run goes, that goes along straight to here, there, then turns a corner, goes there, and then goes straight down there. Well, look at that one, that side. It goes up to here, about there, and then it dives off in that direction, but it goes all the way past here, doesn't it? Look, you see? See how long that is out there? To the other end of that throttle pedal. So the throttle pedal's there, and then you've got the quadrant there for how it goes up to the injection unit, which we all looked at on the, how the injection works. Well, we didn't look at that, but we... We looked at how the butterflies are operated, but it's all rods to operate them butterflies. So I've got to do a bit more work on that uh, before I fit it, and it won't be getting fitted till I've done all this other stuff, but I just took the opportunity to make one because I'm in this area. So I thought, well, let's get these underway. Nice little job to be getting on with. Um, and then here we've got, this is a sort of pattern from before when I was making them on the other one. So this is one of my sort of trial runs. Um, so you can see the swage is going the other direction. Look, we've got, we've got some wildlife in here. It's not very, uh, looks a bit deceased, doesn't it? That's the floor pan for the other side at the rear. So they're again, they're a quite, sort of more elaborate, different shape. You see it sort of curls down like that. But you can see these go in a different direction. You see these go the length of the car, these swages, rather than those ones go across. But again, that's exactly how they are. So that's quite a nice test piece, actually. Um, 
you know, I, I can't remember why I didn't use it. I think because I was still working out, you know, I didn't have enough metal on here, so I had to sort of get, you know, let a piece in. So it was really work in progress, this one. I finessed it and made a better one, and that went in the silver car. But this is development. You know, it doesn't, it, it doesn't always that you, you know, you sort of look at something and say, oh, I'm going to do it this way. You know, sometimes you have to have a little run at it, and then you can say, okay, I can do that better. And then you have to come up with a better one, you know, a better idea. And then once you've done that, you know, you can say, okay, well, you know, this is the way to do them and you can make a pattern and then you can make others. But obviously that's how you, how you do things. Sometimes the first ones, um, you know, it's like a warm up almost. Um, so there we are, like a rehearsal, I guess. Um, uh, although perhaps I'm imparting it with <laughs> more grace than it deserves. It's only bending metal after all. Anyway. I guess um, everyone's thinking of their exercise routines, isn't it? And working off all that, um, all that extra uh, padding they've put on. But as I said, sometimes you need a bit of padding, don't you? <laughs> Especially when you're bashing around bits of metal. It's, uh, yeah. So, I'll um, get back on my bike and off home. Good night. I could have done with getting a bell for Christmas, couldn't I? You know, every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. <laughs>